Hello and welcome, I'm Liam the Music Reviewer and it's time for the 1k Q&A Hip-hip-hurry <laughs> First off, just just thank you, thank you so much for helping me reach this milestone It might seem kind of arbitrary but this is kind of cool knowing that there's like at least a thousand people watching this content who are vaguely interested and have stuck around for as long as they have um, so yeah, I, I just I really really appreciate it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Before we get into the Q and A, I do want to thank some people in particular. Uh, firstly, I want to say thanks to the fellow YouTube music people like David Rowe, Mike the Snare, Buffalo Staple, uh, Rick the Lie, The Sound Bench, Not Real Music, Noise Pond, Deep Cuts. I, I, I think I think I've got everyone there. Um, but yeah, just have been a great support. I've made me feel very welcome since I kind of joined it back in 2017. <laughs> so yeah, I, I greatly appreciate your camaraderie and just your general loveliness. And there's my transistor cast comrades, Jake, Ethan, Josh and Andy. Not only are you good for podcasts, <laughs> but you're also just some great pals and thank you for just taking taking the piss out of me just enough so that my ego doesn't get too inflated um, but just being generally lovely as well. Then in particular I want to thank Josh Dollarstein who made the channel art for this channel um, which I have just, I still really love. I think he did a great job with it um, and then I want to thank my girlfriend Mary who not only helped with camera work for certain videos, has just been really supportive and lovely throughout the whole thing. Um, she also did the little doodle that's in the thumbnail today um, and another doodle that we'll be bringing up later on but I'll, I'll leave that for later on. Lastly to all those on the discord servers that I'm involved in like Deep Cuts Discord or Instrumental Isomer, you know who you are and you've just been a great help so don't think that you're not appreciated at all, there's just so many of you that I just, I would be doing a great disservice if I only listed a few of you but with that out of the way let's get into the Q&A. First up we've got a question from Josh, congrats Pappy, a well deserved milestone for the most lovable and hydrated music reviewer on earth. Thank you Josh, thank you. Big shout out to you, I may not have said you specifically there but you were in charge and still are in charge of many discord <laughs> servers that I'm in so yeah just your paramount of me being involved but anyway, anyway your question, your question. So my question is you found a, a rift in the space time continuum and inside the rift you are transported to the crazy coffee heavy world of Twin Peaks realise that you can quite easily take people across to your world, but some giant dude tells you that only three people from Twin Peaks can join you in Earth. Which three characters will you take over? Whether this is to benefit society as a whole or just simply so they can be your pals is down to you, my good man. What a question. What a question. We always get like a great question on every Friends on Film episode and on Transistor Cast whenever we've bothered to <laughs> put an episode of that out. Um, but Josh always comes through with them. Um, if... Oh. And this is so good because I'm just like a Twin Peaks nut. Uh, Log Lady, without even thinking about Log Lady, I would definitely have on there. She's just so wise and just soothing. I just, I, I would love to have her come over there. Norma as well, like she could serve me coffee and just give me constant reassurance. So that's a, that's a no-brainer. Um, and then I'd probably go for Dr. Jacoby because <laughs> we could start a new podcast, like, friends on shovels or, <laughs> or something like that. So they're my free picks. What a, what a great question. What a great way to get this started. Mike the Snare says, congrats again Liam. Thank you. Thank you Nick. Uh, I've already said earlier on in the video but Nick just gives me a kick up the arse of how good his content is so if for whatever reason you've not already checked him out, go do that. But anyway, he asks me the same question I asked for his Q&A which is HBO gives you the money to make your own music documentary miniseries. They want outlines for three episodes. Which three topics do you cover? Which is, um, if you don't mind, if I don't mind saying so myself, what a great question. <laughs> so this is the first one I'd probably go for would be like an episode on Viper, the rapper, who is just like it's seen as kind of like a meme rapper, but he's also like pretty pivotal to how hip hop and rap changed in like the late noughties and um, like you cowards don't even smoke crack and that he seems like quite a Tommy Wiseau character so I'd love to just like sit down with him and make like a big high budget like sit down interview 
with him. That would that would definitely be the first episode that I would want to do. That's a kind of thing that I'd love to do a video on at some point with information that's readily available. And the second episode would be about Jamba, who you might not know by name, but uh, they were the ones that did all those ringtones during the noughties, like Crazy Frog and Sweetie Chick. It would be great to see how these ringtones basically became like popular music in their own right. Um, and just kind of the controversies that came of it and um, how certain characters are actually kind of like coming back into the limelight that we're getting a Crazy Frog album coming out soon. I think that'd be quite cool to talk about so that would definitely be my second episode. Lastly I would need to do something relevant to Scotland. I'd just be doing a great disservice if I didn't. Um, so I'd like to do like a, just a big big episode on the uh, Cocktail Twins, which again, I never know if I'm saying that right, I should probably get that sorted out before I ever do this HBO episode, um, but just, they were so pivotal to Dream Pop, like just, it wouldn't really exist without them, so I'd love to have a talk about them, about kind of like their impact, talk about Elizabeth, talk about Elizabeth Fraser, talk to Elizabeth Fraser, and um, just kind of like see what was going through their minds at that point. Um, they've since broken up, um, I think it was like in the late 90s they did, and then it was like they were meant to re reunite, um, and then they didn't, so I think there'd be there'd be a kind of an interesting story in there somewhere as well, um, but if for anything it would just be an excuse to talk to one of my favourite bands, so you know, you know that'd, just, that'd be a lot of fun, so thanks for that question. Nick. Mike says, big big congratulations on the 1k milestone Liam mate. Thank you, Mike. You're an absolute gem. Again, you were part of those Discord servers we've met in real life, so I know you exist, so I very much appreciate um, that little congrats there. So, relative to what you've heard from it, how would you rank Sufjan's discography? Um, I've I've listened to a few Sufjan albums, like Illinois and Carrie and Lowell, uh, Michigan, uh, Age of Ads, uh, Seven Swans. Like, I, 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 I do know enough but I'm not listening to everything he's put out. Um, I really don't feel like I'm totally comfortable enough of his material to really rank it. Um, but do, do know that <laughs> it's on the cards. It's one of those artists I know that I will get around to when it comes to ranking them. Uh, but I would probably say the the Age of Ads and Carrie and Lowell are my two favourites of his at this point in time. God knows how it's going to shift once I become more acquainted with him. Um, also, why are banana milkshakes the best thing in the McDonald's menu? Um, they're not. They're not. They're not bad. They're not bad. They're not even the best milkshake though. And also the best thing on the McDonald's menu were those little cheese, like mature cheddar bites that they've since taken off the menu. Um, not a huge concern considering <laughs> everything that's going on, but when society returns to normal, I want those mature cheddar bites to return as well. Dharma815 asks, what's your top five Pixar movies? <sighs> okay, so number five to number one here. Um, the Incredibles. The Incredibles, I think that's a good pick there. Um, Wally. Wally will be number four, I think. Um, it kind of gets a little bit weaker in its second half, but it's still a good second half, and then the first half is just. Amazing, amazing. Um, number three would be Toy Story 2. Love Toy Story 2. I watched that recently. We talked about that in the last Friends on Film episode. Just a huge, huge soft spot in my heart. Um, second pick would be Up. Um, everyone always talks about how the first five minutes are great, and they definitely are. But how that whole movie talks about idol worship and just... Just the just the emotions it evokes throughout. Just just a really beautiful film. So that'd be my second pick. But number one, gotta be Ratatouille. Obviously, the film that has a critic <laughs> in it. Um, but it just it's such a stunning movie. It's just it's one of those kind of films that really did kind of show me the animated movies. Just even call them animated movies, like they are movies in their own right. It doesn't matter if it's real life or if they're animated or whatever. They are just just important, um, and I'm very lucky that I got to see that in the cinema when I was I must have been like ten or eleven with my friend Louis. Um, so sh shout Louis, <laughs> shout Louis for seeing that with me. But yeah, Ratatouille is probably my favourite Pixar film. But I think they've got a fair few good cuts. So sorry if I left anything out. I, I like Monsters Inc as well. Monsters Inc is one that I had kind of 
swap with the incredible so back and forth with those two low quality posts ask congrats big man well deserved and it's only up from here well i know you better as jack Jack, you've been a great pal. You are breaking the, the green screen somehow, so you can see Kirby there. But anyway, you've been a great pal. Uh, love you lots, you're such a sound guy. Um, but you say, my question is, on behalf of Logan, wanna be friends? I, I get a lot of get a lot of people with the same icons asking me if they wanna be YouTube friends. I'm just, I'm very high demand, very high demand. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just kidding, real question is, what video of yours are you most proud of? I'm gonna go for two because I really can't quite choose. The Cure Ranked video is the one that I put a lot of time into. I feel like I just, it's one of those videos where I feel like my my voice as a critic really came through, which I, I, again, I, I'm trying to walk that thin line of being like modest, but also like not being like too, put myself down too much. But the Cure video, I think I did a great job. And uh, when I saw that Buffalo put it as like his favourite uh, YouTube video of uh, 2019, I was just <laughs> had the biggest smile on my face because uh, I was already kind of proud of it on a personal level. Um, but knowing that like people were chuffed with it as well, um, yeah, I just I feel very confident in my abilities that I've shown. It's pretty much set the ba the baseline for what I want from every ranked video and I feel like with the pop 2 one that I just put out there um, that was where I kind of, I've almost set like another baseline for myself personally. I don't know how people prefer one way or the other when it comes to it but I feel like the amount of time that I spent on it, um, the the level of editing, the analysis, like I'm just, it may be recency bias but I feel like in a year's time that'll be the video that if this channel were to blow up and you get that weird channels blow up and they have to like remove certain videos because they don't feel like it kind of lives up to what people were expecting, that pop to a video I'll be just, <laughs> I'll be shoving down folks wrote so yeah that's definitely the one um, along with the Cure Rank video that I feel dead chuffed with and just just really proud of, really proud of, so great question Jack. So our bearded brother Ryan is coming through here with the important questions, so firstly he asks best album of the 80s, 90s and 90s um, and I'm going to pick three of each decade here because it's, it's my Q&A and I'll, <laughs> I'll do what I want. With the 80s it would be Disintegration because of course, uh, Remain in Light because of course um, and then I'd go with Treasure uh, by Cocktail Twins, which is just, again, of course, 80s are mad good for music, and I've only just, like, scratched the surface myself, like, um, I really need to, like, dive even deeper in to see what I'm missing out on there. Uh, with the 90s, the 90s, I would go for, go for American Football self-titled debut, just such an important record to me. Um, Weezer's Blue album, um... And again, another Cocktail Twins record, uh, Heaven or Las Vegas. Um, they were pretty, pretty lucky that not even lucky. They were just, were just they showed their strength as an artist by like putting out two, not not just two great albums, but like, back to back decade wise, putting out two of the best um, records. Um, now with the noughties, the noughties, I would go for go for Kiddy because I'm quite. Not that I'm generic, but like Kiddy is just my favourite Radiohead album. Um, so I'd go for that. Um, Sound of Silver. Sound of Silver. Um, and I'd go for Fair Gold Plus by Biffy Clyro. That's probably the one out of all the ones that I've mentioned that you've maybe not given a go, but it is just an exciting album. A really huge, just dense record with great production. Really great production. Um, so they would be my, my choices for those decades there. Top 3 comedy TV shows. I'm gonna lose track here because I've got so many, but I'd go for Bojack Horseman because on top of being really funny, it's got a great story. Um, I'll cheat and say Golden Age Simpsons as well because nothing will ever make me laugh as hard as that did. Um, and then I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for Broad City. Because Broad City, I think, is just that kind of like stoner comedy stuff that really did tug in my heartstrings in that finale. Um, but there's plenty of other shows like It's Always Sunny and Peep Showing the Good Place. Um, 
just honestly could go on forever <laughs> and ever. What we do in the shadows as well is a great one. Um, it's on its second season just now, and I think give it, give it a season or two, it would be like my top five comedy shows ever. But um, yeah, they they would be my ones to go for there. That was quite difficult actually. <laughs> Lastly, who would win it in a fatal four way sword battle? Buffalo Staple, Not Real Music, The Sound Binge, or Rick the Lie. Uh, the toughest question you've asked so far. I had to make some notes here because I do think each of you have your own your own strength to bring to the table here or to the battle, as it were. Uh, Buff with his energy, Ryan with your perseverance, Amy with the resilience, and then Rick with the patience. And ultimately, just kind of, I feel that the result would vary, like whatever, like any day you ask me this. But right now, I think Amy would win it. Just, I don't know, I feel like she would pull out the bag there. Um, but it'd be a close battle, so it would be. It'd be a close battle. It'd be like watching a bunch of Smash Brothers like, pros playing melee or something like that. You would just be kind of in awe. But at this point in time, I would say Amy, <laughs> Amy wins this battle. OG Nick Marsh says, What's up? I have missed you saying that, Nick, so much. You ne- nearly always said, What's up? when a video went up, and that was just like the reassurance I needed to know that. It was up. I knew what was up. Um, he has two questions. He says, "What is your favourite hip hop blog?" Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of them, but Focus Hip Hop Blog are pretty good. You should give them a go if you haven't checked them out already. He, uh, the the person that runs that mad mad grind. A mad grind going on there. But second question: What is the most disappointing album you've ever heard in your life? Um, and it would, I know it's a bit of a beaten horse at this point, but it would be Air For Now by Arcade Fire. Just, I think it was just more disappointing. I've heard probably worse albums that I had high expectations for, but I was expecting just another great album from Arcade Fire and the fact that it was so bad. Again, there's like the title track and Creature Comfort and Signs of Life, which are all solid to good tracks but when it's bad it's just really bad and it just hurt more because they hadn't dropped a bad album at that point even reflector which i know many regarded being their like weakest album other than everything now i still think was quite good so yeah that definitely that definitely hurt a lot jack menzies surprise surprise my brother has asked a few questions thanks for being quiet when I was back home recording videos, even if I had to ask you <laughs> multiple times to, to be quiet. Um, you've asked favourite country song, which is a bit of a generic choice for me here, but I'll go for Folsom Prison Blues by Johnny Cash. Just just dead catchy and just the story told on it. It's just cool, even though I've heard it so many times at this point. Uh, favourite childhood film. And I've already mentioned all those Pixar films earlier on, but I would probably go for something like Lilo and Stitch. That's the one I can remember having the VHS tape for and just playing repeatedly. Um, and then favourite overall series and film, that's like constantly shifting <laughs> for me. But at this point in time in May 2020, I would go for Mr. Robot as my favourite TV show of all time. And then as my favourite movie, I watched the Before trilogy quite recently. My favorite, and they are just the best trilogy of all time. Um, Before Sunset was probably my favorite, though. It's close between Before Sunrise and Before Sunset for me has been my favorite film of all time. What do you see yourself prioritizing for the channel moving forward? Open ed on purpose. I, I love Icon, by the way. Um, I'll just kind of quickly kind of summarize what I want to do with the channel for 2020. Um, more content, but the same quality. Uh, two more ranked videos this year. I want to kind of aim for having three or four ranked videos per year. Um, I'll be doing a stream every month, the last Saturday of each month. So this Saturday upcoming, 9 p.m. I'll be playing Hitman 2. Come and join me. That'll be something I'll be doing more often, just so I can kind of talk to you guys on a more casual basis. Um, more roundups as well. At least one every two months, as opposed to one big one. Um, more interviews as well. I think would be cool. Um, so if I can get them, I'll try and provide them for you guys. Um, and other than that, I will we'll be doing a Patreon from, from now on. Um, it's not going to be anything too exclusive or too pricey really right now. All I feel comfortable asking for is £1 per month, which is like, I think it's just like a dollar and 20 cents in America last time I checked. Um, but that will be to support me and also get access to all my content 24 hours beforehand. Um, maybe down the line I'll add more tiers, but right now all I feel comfortable asking for is £1. And if you can't even uh, give £1 per month, I'm not going to judge you at all. Um, hard times and whatnot. Um, but if you can do so, 
I'll leave the link down in the description below um, and you can feel free to do that if you want to be that's basically what I want to do for the rest of 2020 and we'll see we'll see how that goes <laughs> the Simbin says congrats my boy we don't respect Marky in this house but when it comes to the Queen Amy thank you thank you was there any defining point you started getting heavily invested into music and if so what sparked that out of you and do you have any fond memories of the first few albums that ever hit you in that special way um that was a superb question <laughs> superb question um i think like many people that review music or are like invest in music to put a butterfly was definitely one of them but it was 2013 when i started this whole like reviewing thing where I feel like I was taking it more seriously. Uh, so albums like Modern Vampires of the City, Pure Heroin, Jesus, uh, Random Access Memories, um, Old by Danny Brown as well. Just there's a lot of albums from 2013 that even Jesus, I know Jesus gets a bad rap by some folk, it's sometimes a bit too much of a of a positive rap as well. I think it's still a good album all in all. Um, but yeah those are albums that still have an impact on me just because of how pivotal they were to me kind of analyzing music in, a, in the written form um, and then there's albums from like when I was younger from my adolescence from my childhood that um, still mean a lot to me like Demon Days and Blink-182 self-titled record um, I, I think I think I had taste back then some other stuff that <laughs> hasn't aged too well um, but definitely Demon Days and Blink-182 self-titled record I think really still stand the test of time. I've already answered the favourite video one but if you had to guess what album do you think you've played the most in your life? Um, uh, I would I would really love to see <laughs> what I, I listened to when I was younger. So much of I had Last FM, um, I had it when I was on the 360 but I don't know what account it was or if I even used it right. Um, I'm sure Iridescence would be high on there, Emotion, Pop 2, Melodrama. Those ones are kind of to be expected because, like, I know objectively <laughs> that they're my most listened to ones. Um, but I'd imagine like every Biffy Clyro album, um, Kiddy, um, I'm sure Mouth Moods as well. They would all be listened to. Like, they'd be very high up on there. Um, probably, probably um, Benito Generation as well. Um, Flower Boy. Um, yeah, just, I don't know, I, I feel, I feel like those would be the big ones there. There's probably some other ones that I'm just kind of missing out on here. Um, I guess one more, I would say uh, Young Lean's Unknown Death 2002. Um, <clears throat> that would be, <laughs> that would be a big one. I listened to that, like, obsessively from, like, whatever year it dropped to 2016 were like the big periods of me listening to that. And the last question from Amy here is if you feel comfortable slash want to talk about them, I'd love to hear about your tattoos, anything you want to tell us, what they mean to you, the experience of getting them, uh, also a great question. Um, so I'm going to try and show off this one that I've got here. You can kind of see, I'll put a better, qu a better like picture um, of it on screen just now. Um, but that's the only tattoo I've got at the moment. I was meant to get another one um, back in April but obviously Oh, COVID situation didn't happen um, and I'm going to keep that under wraps just now because it's something that there's like I, I feel like it's something I'd want to kind of make a video about as a whole in terms of like what the band and the song in question or the album in question means to me but we'll get to that at another point um, <coughs> but that one that I just showed you there is from Twin Peaks um, I was really obsessed with that show back in 2017 because my girlfriend Mary showed me it um, and the, the, the meanwhile pose um, it's there's a lot of interpretation like anything to do with uh, David Lynch like there's never like a clear cut thing like when people ask him what does that mean he kind of goes mm -hmm, I'm not going to tell you <laughs> so I never I knew that I was never going to get a clear cut answer but a lot of people say it's related to a Buddhist mantra of do not fear to kind of show that it's not the doppelganger which um, I found really cool and really reassuring so that was kind of the thing that other than the fact that it's a cool pose and it's kind of like one of the kind of iconic kind of like one of the most like iconic scenes from Twin Peaks, I kind of just thought that's a nice little layer that makes it more meaningful to me. Um, in terms of getting it, um, I feel <laughs> super, super faint beforehand because it's just, I don't know, I, I bruise like a peach, I fall like a sack of potatoes, kind of just, I'm a very <laughs> sensitive uh, boy, but I managed to get through it pretty decently. Like the pain on my forearm, I guess it's kind of the forearm, on my arm anyway, um, 
it was just kind of like when a cat like like gets all set on you and it's like kneading on your leg it's kind of like that kind of pain where it's like kind of hurts a little bit but you get kind of used to it um and the other one that i'm hoping to get is going to be kind of further up on my arm so hopefully the pain threshold isn't going to be <laughs> tested too much harry says congrats on hitting 1k boss thank you harry you absolute king um, and his question is what's your top 5 a24 films and why is number one ghostbusters 2 <laughs> Which is just a transistor cast inside joke that if you want to know the context, go watch the last episode. Um, but my top five would be um, number five would be Hereditary, four would be The Lighthouse, Good Time would be my third, uh, Uncut Gems would be number two, which it was kind of close between the, the top two here, but ultimately I think Moonlight would be just my favourite one they've put out, just uh, personally, just means a lot means a lot um, but A24 do be coming out of the good in terms of what they decide to distribute um, so and there's kind of other ones that I had to leave out here like the Vivovich and 8th um, grade just there's quite a few goodies in there and Midsummer as well but they're my, they're my top five just here. Andy Phillips says congrats Liam first big milestone accomplished thank you thank you Andy if you're a fan of like channels like Gus Johnson and Drew Gooden then definitely go give Andy a shot he kind of like looks at old childhood movies and other nostalgic things in a very kind of comedic lens i think he makes some great stuff so go give him a go give him a go it's a nice chill dude um he asked how long have you lived in scotland slash would you ever move anywhere else um i've always lived in scotland scottish scottish boy through and through um i originally lived down in a area of scotland called ayrshire which not much happens there i've got a soft spot for it still but not much happens there, um, up near Glasgow now, whereas where I've always wanted to be, uh, I can't imagine living anywhere other than like around Glasgow. But obviously, traveling wise, there's so many places. Like, I'm five foot eight, and I've got a list of <laughs> places that I'd want to go that would be like taller than me. Um, I guess it doesn't really make much sense of that comparison because five foot eight isn't that big. But never mind. Yeah, there's a lot of places I want to travel to, but. In terms of where I'd want to live, it's always going to be Scotland to some degree, but mainly around about Glasgow. Lily asks, who's your favourite Animal Crossing character? Thank you, Lily. Thank you. I was hoping <laughs> I was hoping somebody would ask me about Animal Crossing. Um, so I've not got like a top five or whatever. Um, Bones is probably my favourite. I feel like if I could just have one villager on my island, I would always want it to be Bones. He's just so friendly and optimistic and quirky. Um, he just comes out with such like class three lines that there was one time I was talking to him and he was just saying how he'd like tricked himself um, but like he time travelled or something like that it was it was some like gobble he like that and I just oh it's always a good time talking to him um, Aurora and Shep I always got my way to talk to them uh, Goldie and quite recently Bob moved to my island so um, I, f I think they would be like my top five if you had to make me choose Cameron says hey Liam you the man Cam, you the man, we need to get coffee, this is all over, have a big old, big old chat, um, but your question is, what is your favourite high concept movie, Minus Cube? Um, if you're not familiar with what a high concept movie is, I wasn't until fairly recently, it's basically like a what if plot, so like snakes on a plane, what if there were snakes on a plane, Inception, what if you were if you could go into people's dreams like kind of like that thing um so i noted down a few of my favorites uh, some of them are quite obvious ones if you are really familiar with co uh, high concept films but i still think they're all pretty great ones nonetheless so eternal sunshine of the spotless mind memento arrival the lobster which i think the lobster probably has like my favorite high concept of like oh you need to get into a relationship or else you turn to an animal of your choice which is just <laughs> What a strange movie, um, and it follows as well. Um, I think they're all great, great wee picks there, so hopefully you're a fan of them as well, Cameron. Buffalo Staple, the man, the king, says, Liam, kiss me. Also asks a few questions. So, if Pop 2 is so good, how come there isn't a Pop 2? Been pondering this a lot lately for some odd reason. I feel like your insight could be very helpful. Um, I'm being quite honest, like, the more I think about it, the more compelled I am to just say that pop 2 isn't a good album because if it was there would be a pop 2 too so i think pop 2 is actually one of the worst albums of all time now do you have any particular interest in becoming youtube friends uh sorry but my mum always told me never become friends with strangers that you meet in youtube comment section she told me 
that since before YouTube was a thing somehow. <laughs> What's the best first listen you've ever had with an album? Um, just off the top of my head, I can kind of go with the same Big Fish theory. I was just kind of taken aback by that record. Um, just I was just infatuated with it. Um, and after that first listen, it, like literally as soon as it was finished, I'm like, I'm listening to this again. There was nothing that sounded like that, um, and I still think that excitingness, excitement, <laughs> is still very much there when it comes to it. Who would win in a fight between a grilled cheese sandwich and a taco? While a grilled cheese sandwich is better, if for some like an actual fight, if they were in a fight, then a taco with its hard shell would just kind of like it would just pierce the grilled cheese sandwich. It would just leak out all of its like cheesy gooiness, um, and that would be it. Be did. So, I sadly the grilled cheese would, lo would lose in that one. Um, and then your fifth question here. What song should I listen to right now? Um, I think you should listen to Yusuke's Witness by Vail Smith. There's that little like swelling string sample near the end which is just beautiful and stunning. But you could also listen to that um, Make a Cup of Coffee for Your Head song from TikTok that um, is definitely not one of the worst things I've heard this year. So. You can choose. You can choose there. Um, final two questions here. What's twenty six plus forty? Um, we live on fascination by Alpha Pete. Um, seven. Who? Yes, Daniel Jibbert says, here's to 1k sir clean and fresh, congrats, we're rooting for you. Thank you Daniel, my man, that's such a, <laughs> that, was so, that was so nice. Um, anyway, my question, several in one, is what is your top favourite band, solo artist, piece of music, album, song, or whatever? If you had to pick one per category, the depth of reason is up to you, or not, necessary if you want, much love. Uh, yeah, thank you again, that's a really good question there, and I'm going to treat this as like a Desert Island Discs, so like, have one band, one artist, and one piece of music, whether that's a whole album or song, or whatever. Um, so band-wise, I would go for The Cure, because they've got like a lot of variety and a lot of like, they've not really got any misses, bar the last two albums that they put out. So The Cure would be the easy one there for band. Artist would be Danny Brown, because he's got the bangers, but also has like, I feel like I just analyse his work forever, so that'd be an easy choice. And then in terms of like a piece of work, like a, just any, like a song, if I could go for one song, it'd be Run Away With Me because my life would just be just emptier. It would be emptier without that song, so I would have to go for that. Scott says, well done Liam. Thank you, Scott. If you had to switch places with one of these famous wills for a day, who would it be? Will Toledo, Will Smith, or Will Arnett? Um, I know I would have like the musical talent if I was either of the first two, <laughs> um, and it's just really cool. I guess Will Smith would just be really cool to be, but just the fact that if I was Will Arnett, I feel like he would just get up to some interesting stuff, and also like whenever you talk, it would just be like BoJack was narrating <laughs> your life. So that that just is too tempting for me. It's too tempting. So I would need to I would need to go for Will Arnett. That was a that was a <laughs> very weird but good question there. Patrick P Gibson. Has two questions here. Uh, who would you say are the most overrated, overhated, underrated, and underhated artists? So I'll just kind of, I'm going to quickly work through these. Um, over, overrated, I don't usually like saying that, but in terms of like, if, like an artist everyone seems to love that I just don't really get, it would be Swans. They've got one album that I like, and the other ones that I've heard are just kind of a bit up their own arse, <laughs> is what I'd say, just going for far too long and just aren't interesting enough for me. Um, overhated, I think Linkin Park. Still to this day, um, just get a lot of, a lot of spite, despite the, despite the fact that uh, Meteora and Hybrid Fury are still two good to great albums, and there were still some bops afterwards. Um, so I feel they're kind of unfairly overhated, um, underrated. I would probably go for the Hotelier because they don't get brought up enough in best albums of 2010s discussions. Um, so while people that love them, love them. I still think not enough people are getting on that hype. Underhated, I, I don't really know which one to say here. I'm going to say Catfish just because I, I feel like people, I, even then, I feel like people that don't like them are already very much on my side here. Like, even people in my immediate circle, like, no one really likes Catfish. So it's not like, I, feel, I don't feel like they don't, it's not like I think they need to be hated more. I just think that they are just so banal and frustrating that it really does get to me. Um, maybe Jerry Cinnamon though, because it feels like um, he's huge in Scotland and our 
kind of the UK as a whole, pretty much. But like Americans don't seem to know that <laughs> he's just an endlessly frustrating character as well. Um, but yeah, they're kind of all my ones there. Um, and then you had a second question, which is a. Uh, also, how do you think my prediction about everyone not staying hydrated during festival season and you getting to 1 million subs from your predicting 2020 video holds up now? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we quite expected all festivals <laughs> to, to be cancelled. Um, but there's still time for me to hit a million subs, so hopefully the universe will balance and be restored and, and instead of having festivals, I still get the 1 million subs. Let's, let's keep our fingers crossed there. Pedro asked, top 3 AC songs that people need to know. Um... And I think you meant like AC as an Animal Collective, um, but I'm gonna assume you also meant Animal Crossing. So top three Animal Crossing songs: Mr. Asetti's theme, the Roost Cafe, and the City Folk title screen are my top three Animal Crossing songs. Get to curate one stage at any festival of your choice. What's your dream festival stage running order? Um, really good question. I love. I just love kind of theorizing about things or like making up situations in my head. So um. When it comes to that, I would just love to like attend like Square Garden in person. It's yeah, so, like having Charlie XX um, headline and then having people like Hundred Gex, Kirka Obnito, Sophie uh, from the Heart, Hannah Diamond, um, just to be a lot of cool, cool acts like that for it. I think I would just, I would just not. It'd be impossible for me to not have a good time. It would just be great. So that would definitely be my one. So great question there. Heaps familiar face. In your opinion, which artist has a worst fandom? So easily I would go for like Six Nine or XXX because they're like terrible people and for somebody to like still be a stan or like a really strong fan of them, it kinda of reflects on their character I would say. Um I really don't like the future fandom though. Like they kind of just see misogyny as a meme and uh, like I would like to think that a lot of them are just kind of teenagers that, that are just being dead immature and they'll reflect on it in a few years time and be like oh what were we even thinking but like Future himself is like kind of picking up on it and playing along with it which I just think is really just at, at a certain point you kind of have to think to yourself like do you not get it or do you get it and this is like not a meme to you um so his fandom, like, at the very least, are, like, there's probably fandoms people will be like, oh, like, BTS, BTS have a horrible fandom, and it's like, but at least when they are trying to, like, show off their fan cams or whatever, it's to, like, big up the artist and to big up the music, whereas I feel like whenever it comes to, like, future, it's just, when they're being annoying, it's because they're usually being sexist, so, um, a, a three-way tie between XXX, Future, and 6 9 for, like, worst fandom. Clink asked two questions, they, they used my little community feature, which I can use from now on, so I'll be definitely abusing that, uh, but the first one was, who are your favourite house techno artists, and I'll just kind of simply go for, like, Daft Punk, uh, Aphex Twin, and Justice, I really need to check out more in this sort of field, and um, there's artists that I really like who incorporate house and techno like Sophie but there's not like kind of like pure house or techno acts that I can really like list off endlessly. Have you heard of 100 Gex and if so what are your thoughts? Um, I, yeah I, well, I, did mention, I did mention them a bit earlier on but obviously you don't know that because you're not in the room just now um, but I really like them. I think they're wonderful. I think they're exciting. I think they're just a really promising act. I'm looking forward to that remix album they put, they're putting out. Um, and I put them quite high on my 2019 album of the year list, so if you didn't watch that, go watch that and see where they land. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely a, a Gekster, a, a Gek, I don't know what the fandom's called, but I'm definitely whatever that is. I've only got one question on Curious Cat, and it's this one that says, congrats on 1k, thank you. Uh, who are your YouTube influences? Um, so other than like my, the, again, the, the YouTube music review and circle who all like really like just inspire me and subtle and like significant ways um i think the big ones out with that would be um h bar guy i think i mentioned that in the last time that i got asked this in my 500 subscriber special um he just is so entertaining and just knows his stuff um i can just make these big hour-long videos and just n my attention never never fades away and um, nitro rad's another big one um quite yeah i just think that even though he focuses on video games primarily, a lot of what he does is what I kind of want to achieve, not by copying, but just kind of like making sure that the end result 
is in terms of like being very interesting, knowing the right mix of comedy and analysis, um, just and just having like a just like like a really just good aesthetic, um, it's something that I want to kind of more focus on. Um, it's just as this channel grows, um, season our big one, and then it's got the wars, obviously. Again, and <laughs> these are all gaming ones, but like I feel like you do have to have like a mix of influences to kind of like really kind of learn and grow. Um, I really like Game Maker's Toolkit as well in terms of um, the kind of video essay elements and Sarah Z again somebody else who just really knows um, knows her stuff. Uh, Jack Saint as well is somebody that kind of like I like their whole dry wit, uh, dry British wit um, and again the topics that they cover really interest me so I think I think there's just a big pot of influences there. Callum Summer says congrats bro thank you and asking the most important question now, before the controversy, what was your favourite spins in Glasgow? Yeah, before this whole debacle <laughs> went on, I won't be returning to spins again, but Crystal Palace slash Crystal Phallus um, down near Central Station was my favourite. Just it was a lot really roomy and it was right next to Central Station so that if you got tipsy you could just kind of just didn't have to wander too far. Um, there's a good few bars near around Central Station that I know that I can go to instead, like Old Hairdressers or Jury Street. Um, so yeah, that's that's the the somber, <laughs> the somber answer there. Pip Junior says, "Congrats, Liam. Well deserved. Thank you. What in your ears slash eyes makes for good music production slash mixing? I'm just mixing all this <laughs> up just now. Um, is it the feel, clarity, or a mix of many different things? Um, really good question. Really good question. Not really something I've thought about too much in terms of like what I'm always expecting because I just always want to have the best of whatever an artist is aiming for." But I definitely gravitate towards daring production choices, like experimental stuff. Um, but I also do like a lot of clarity to my music. I like it to be very, if, if it can be, if it's between being lo-fi and smooth, I, I don't know. I like having the middle ground of it being kind of like rough, but still very detailed. Um, I guess it kind of comes down to the whole thing of like, do you prefer the original Twin Fantasy or the like the remade one they had in 2018? And for me, it would be the one they remade in 2018. Um, I suppose I just like my music to be. Um, I, I guess it's always weird when you say it ought to be mixed well because you get albums like some rap songs that are mixed dead oddly, and that's part of the whole charm. Um, but as like a to kind of like define what a Liam Core album is for me, it has it's usually something that's eccentric, over the top, um, and isn't ashamed to like really channel its true self. If that true self is like a very eccentric character, so yeah, over the top eccentric is what I'm usually looking for. Um, but if it can be detailed, I would rather it be detailed than to be not <laughs> detailed. So I hope that answers the question somewhat. <laughs> Mary says, congrats, you're amazing and deserve this more than anyone. Thank you, Mary, but I already have a girlfriend called Mary, so just kind of give me a bit of space here. What gig do you wish you could relive and why? Um, there's two I've got for this. Um, the first one would be Carly Jepsen's Primavera set, which is, Mary was there, so she already knows this, but for anyone that wasn't there, so exciting and fun. It had big, a big inflatable sword, it was just, I would love to go that all over again, especially with some more of these dedicated B-sides that have came out. Um, and then Biffy Clyro's Vertigo of Bliss and Only Revolutions Night was great. I was sweaty. It was like 23 songs long. It was just, it was so good. I would love for them to do that all over again, like have like three nights in a row of the of those albums. Um, yeah, just both incredibly fun gigs that were like great for different reasons, but overall were still just, just amazing for me. And the last question for today from 95 Mr. Rob is if you could choose one band to reform, who would it be? And I know I could like choose like any sort of band. I could like, I could go for Cocktail Twins to be fair if I could like remove all that tension in that band. But if I'm being honest, it'd be more on baseball. They're on like an indefinite hiatus, so they've not really broke up, so it wouldn't really be a reform. But like it's still the same for me, like an indefinite hiatus and being broken up, like I'm still missing that music um, so I would choose more on baseball and hopefully it won't be too long to get an announcement um, but at least the music that we've got from them is still great that I'm not going to be I'm not, I, I won't need to struggle too much I've, I can still depend on that music um, but that's that's the end of this 1k Q&A that was a lot of fun thank you to everyone that asked questions um, 
and yeah, hopefully it won't be too long until the next Q&A at 10k. If, I think that's when you usually have to do it, yeah. I'll, I'll, the next one will be at 10k, um, but if you want to support me on Patreon, go ahead. Um, if you are free on Saturday night, uh, 9pm GMT or, or BST, I, I need to figure out what the time is, um, but the, yeah, 9pm BST, catch me on a stream uh, for Hitman 2. I'll be on for a few hours. We can talk about whatever. If you didn't get to ask a question in this, we can do that. You can watch me kill bad guys. That'll be fun. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you again for helping me hit this great milestone. And as always, stay safe and stay hydrated.